Hello everyone, it's Daniel from Deep In Hub, and today we are here with Two Blocks with Remy, and he's gonna be talking about his progress, what they're doing, and what they're building in this really interesting Deep In project. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining. It's a pleasure to have you here with us, uh, Remy, in our first episode. So this is the first episode that we're trying to do. We're trying to build a lot of, uh, let's say, Deep In Hub podcasts or YouTube videos that we're gonna try to interview different founders, different projects in this space that we believe it's gonna grow a lot in the next few years. Um, thank you so much for joining. And yeah, could you talk a little bit about yourself, why you are here and um, why you're trying to build? Okay, perfect. Uh, so I'm Remy, co-founder of uh, Two Blocks. So what's Two Blocks? We collect mobility data uh, through citizens that can empower IoT devices such as phones or IoT sensors. Uh, in order to, to build the community, the, the, the city of tomorrow. So uh, the purpose of two blocks is to improve uh, mobility and safety for 2030 and 2050. Um, but let's let's uh, first talk about the, the, the issue that we are addressing with two blocks with uh, some key figures. Um, so in, 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 for example, in Brussels, we have a, a municipality of around 30,000 citizens and they have around 600 uh, complaints per year about traffic and about the speed in the neighborhood. And it's really difficult to address that kind of complaints for the city. So the goal of two blocks is to make that an objective view of all those complaints about the speed and the traffic and help them to solve the mobility challenge inside the city. Nice, yeah, I think I met you guys uh, at least some people on your team last year during the Brussels Blockchain Week it was a really interesting uh, project, and and it's in, it's super cool to see how the actually the deep in space has been growing so much in in a little bit over a year. Um, when did you guys start with this idea of the two blocks? Yeah, it all started with uh, one of my neighbor that was complaining about the speed and the traffic into the street, and. I was also agree with him that the speed of the vehicles was a little bit too fast, but we don't have any, we didn't have any data to to prove it. And what he was doing at that time, it was recording and making the speed detection with a speed gun himself, ju just to record the data and send to the municipality. And here we've seen an opportunity to bring all this data collection uh, on any kind of IoT devices or smartphone to the municipality and open the communication between the citizen and the municipality level. Oh, that's interesting. And how, how big is this problem? Like if you, if you want to do this first, of course, in a small, uh, small city, Brussels is not that small, but like in Brussels, then you want to expand to the rest of the world. Uh, what, how are you guys trying to get to that point? Uh, I mean, I, I think dipping is the best perfect uh, use case for this, right? Yeah, exactly. It's always, um, the challenge is always about the, the supply and the demand of data, about uh, that kind of traffic or speed. That's why we added the speed to the detection. So we can measure the traffic like counting cars, pedestrians, vehicles, and adding also the speed of all those elements. And every city have a different pace about the detection of those models. And we can easily onboard any kind of uh, citizens using sensors or a smartphone to collect the data and to provide the data directly to the city. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the why two blocks, uh, the name? Yeah, that's a good question. We we started firstly the the project by naming it uh, traffic. So that was the first name of two blocks was traffic. Then we changed it about uh, in CAT scan. Uh, it was a little bit weird because it was uh, the meaning was you see the cat behind the, the window and observing <laughs> everything from the window. So it was like cat scan, but and we had a really nice logo from one of the dev team. But we, yes, we, we, we have not decided to go ahead with this one. And the last one that is now two blocks came from we, we are collecting data in the, the neighborhood and a neighborhood is a block. So you can collect data block by block. And that's where we, we, we define the name of two blocks with two blocks from the block. Nice. I see. I see. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I remember like when I talked to your team before, the idea that you have is like people just buy uh, this hardware, which has like a camera and then you can place in front of the houses, in front of the stores. Uh, how's the project is going? I heard that you guys are also releasing a mobile app and how is the, that evolving? Yes, indeed. We 
we are a startup, so we are evolving every day. So with new products, with new solution. But for now, we have two main products. The first one is the Mobi One sensor. It's a plug and play sensor to install on your window and you can directly monitor the traffic in front of your house. So it's uh, really easy to set up. Uh, this one, we, we sold it uh, at the beginning of the year and it's only for beta users. So for now, we are just using the sensors to get feedbacks and also using for our pilot project and paid customers. So we are using this device to make collaboration uh, in different cities in Europe, for example. Um, and the second product is the MobiGo, a mobile app available right now on iOS and Android. So if you can check, it's available. And the goal of the app is to collect the same data. So you can just pick your phone, go into the street or from your window, measure the, the traffic in your street and get the average speed of the vehicles. Nice. So it's more or less the same idea with the hardware, but then you're using like a phone. Could you use like a like a, a spare phone that you have in the house, just connect it and leave it plugged in, pointing to the window as well? Uh, yes, uh, that's that's the purpose of, of the app. Uh, for now, uh, since we are working on edge, uh, edge detection, so all the detection is made inside the phone. So we don't record or don't send any video or images from the phone. So it's edge computing at 100%. And from there, you need still some uh, some good uh, smartphone to process the images into uh, numbers. So for that, you can use any kind of a smartphone. But uh, as the minimum, we are expecting some some devices from 20, 2080, for example. I mean, that's great. I think I, I think most people already have some spare phones from 2018 in their house, right? Uh, I'm very excited to try it out. I haven't. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember exactly. I've seen the old one, but. This one, I'm sure I'm gonna make sure to, to drop the link as well for the for the those who want to download the app and try it out themselves. I think having an easy way for people to get onboarded and um, start just installing by an app in their phone can really really help increase the amount of people they're gonna to try two blocks first, right? Um, yeah. One thing that I yeah sorry, that's uh, yeah you, you you have indeed two. Um, to leverage the, the, the first one is for sure to decrease the entry barrier for any users to join the project, but also on the demand side. So for the municipality itself, we received a huge uh, traction for, from there. So it's really matching the market between what we can provide as data and what data are requesting the municipalities itself. Yeah, I think it's amazing. I'm super excited to keep following this project since the, I mean, since last year and then see everything that happened. And I mean, uh, as a startup founder myself, I know how hard it is to build a product and also trying to pivot in until you find the perfect uh, market fit for all your product that you're building, right? And uh, it looks like you guys are getting there. Uh, one question that I saw, like, I mean, following everything that's been happening in the deeping world, I saw that you guys have recently moved from, initially it was an Algorand blockchain and now you guys move into Peak, right? Uh, maybe you could bring like talk a little bit about that. Yeah, exactly. That uh, so we started to to be onboarded on Algorand ecosystem. Um, so that was uh, last year, and recently we decided to to work with uh, Peak to to launch two blocks into the Peak blockchain. We made this decision. It's a it's a mature one. So it's, it's not a quick decision or quick win for 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 two blocks. It's a really a long term vision, and we did that for different reason. Uh, but the main one was the alignment of, about the deep in sector itself and really mm -hmm. the focus on IoT. And that's really something that we wanted for two blocks to be in one ecosystem when we can have interaction with different projects. Um, and the second one is the perception of the community. It was for sure some, some we received some critics from our grand community. That's something we cannot avoid. But mm -hmm. we, we handled it, and I think everyone understood the, the choice. Um, one community member from Agron made a really good feedback about the, the move we made. He, he mentioned that a successful crypto project on another chain is better than just a, a failed Agron project. So it means <laughs> any kind of blockchain project is always better than just no, a, a no blockchain project. So I really love it. Yeah, that's great. I mean, in, at the end of the day, like you have different blockchains, they're competing between themselves. But 
everybody's trying to make crypto web3 succeed right it's not an easy task uh we've been in this ecosystem for so long and it's a very broad market that everybody can win if people are going to be fighting over things uh that doesn't help anyone uh, but it's really nice to, to see you guys um moving to peak as well uh, i spoke with them not like uh, quite recently as well and i've seen a lot of movement in their like peak plus iot on the deep in space um, it's been super interesting to see um, this this move. So congrats to you guys. I know migrating blockchain is not an easy thing. Uh, it's a lot of like risk as well involved, but uh, I'll be cheering for, for you on this one. Uh, <laughs> can you tell me like uh, since you guys started, let's say what was the hardest thing uh, r running like this company and it started like a deep in project? Yeah, the... Um... The, the other thing for, from our side, it was more internally. It was because we started two blocks as a side project just to make sure that we were aligned with the market and what we can deliver for the project. And the, the really challenge we had was to move all the team between a side project to a full time project. Now we are three people on board at full time with uh, three of us uh, on the side project. Uh, so that was really the, the biggest challenge uh, we, we've seen internally. Um, the external challenge, we've seen some, um, but for now, we are quite confident about what we are building. And uh, with the community, we have really a close community of beta users where we can uh, ask different questions to improve the product and also to, to improve the traction on the market. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's something that we with Deep in Hub we are trying to do as well is bring knowledge and bring information for all the Deep in projects, the projects that are growing. And I'm really happy to have you guys there and, and, and working together on this. Um, I mean, I do think the pro whatever, I do think what you guys are building is, is really interesting and I, I believe it's going to grow a lot in the next few, in the near future. Uh, but on your own words, what do you think about like the next few years, let's say two, three, five years, uh, not necessarily crypto wise but like as a company in two blocks yeah we, we we see two blocks as really a bridge between the city and the citizen and our purpose it's not only to onboard any crypto or blockchain enthusiasts but also to onboard any citizens so the goal is to make the blockchain as transparent as we can to really on board easily any kind of people because uh, the power of two blocks is to, to bring back some power to the citizens to start a discussion with the city. So that's really the purpose and that's where we see two blocks in a few years. Yeah, I think when I talk to a lot of other deep in projects and I believe myself, it's it's deep in, it's, it's a, it should be an infrastructure that you forget about, you forget that it's crypto, right? And um, uh, something that I like saying is that I believe that Deepin is going to be the gateway drug for Web3 for most people. It's how we actually bring the mass adoption for crypto for people who don't really under, they, they don't even know that they're working with crypto. I think that's like a key thing that everyone is trying to do. Uh, and then I think like one of the last questions that I would like to ask is um, how do you like since you guys started like a few years ago until now, how personally have you feel the Deepin ecosystem growing? Even before it was called Deepin, right? Deepin is quite like a new name, let's say. Yeah, we, we see Deepin like a really high potential and we've seen that it's bringing more and more mature project learning from the past. So we, we all know what a good and what a, a successful Deepin project can, can, um, can uh, so we all know what uh, a successful uh, uh, leading deep in project can bring into the market and uh, the pace of, de of deployment like Ilium did in the past. Uh, but we also know that we, we all the deep in project have to work on the demand side of the data or the services to make sure it's, it will be profitable, profitable in the future. So it's uh, really a turning point where we see it's a good time to build all those new infrastructure, new deep in project, uh, but with more strong uh, foundation. That's really all about the foundation. And the day we will have also more Web2 projects coming into the deep in ecosystem. That's also something where we we'll see that deep in will be really broad in the, in the market. 
Yeah, I know exactly. I do think that as well. I think uh, we're going to continue growing, always learning from everybody else, right? Uh, just on Deepin Hub, we have over 100 Deepin projects. And it's really nice how the Deepin ecosystem is a small ecosystem for now. But everybody's trying to reach a goal and learning, sharing the knowledge and, and trying to get somewhere together because the market is big enough and there is space for everyone to, to succeed. Um, would you like to have something else? Would you like to say uh, your future plans, anything that you, you're launching? Of course, you have the mobile app that we're going to put the link below. But uh, as a last word, what would you like to say? Uh, yes, we, we, we just uh, released uh, the mobile app that is available on both platforms, so iOS and Android. And we are looking for as many beta users right now because it's really early stage for the app to challenge it, to give feedback so we can easily improve it over the time. And uh, it's really a good way to join a deep-in project. It's the new way, the, the very different way to join deep-in projects with IoT sensors or smartphone. Uh, it, here, it's just a simple way to, to start with deep-in. It's by using your smartphone. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Remy. And I'll make sure to drop the links as well on the video. And just make sure to keep track on two blocks. I think they're going to build great things together. Thanks so much for your time and have a great week and of course and don't forget to go to deepinhub.io to follow all your deepin projects and updates uh, thanks so much and let's keep on rocking